When I was a young boy, I was told that anybody could become President of the United States. Well, now I'm beginning to believe it. That's Clarence Darrow, who grew up in an unconventional household in the state of Ohio. His father was an abolitionist, a religious free thinker, and was known in the small town of Kinsman as the village infidel for his atheist beliefs. Because my father was a heretic, he was always on the defensive, Darrow wrote later. And we children only thought it right and loyal that we should defend his cause. Darrow's oratorical skills were well developed by his late teens, and he would regularly discuss in town debates, issues of the day. He joined the Democratic Party and spoke regularly on their behalf and later went on to become a leading member of the American Civil Liberties Union. In 1888, he moved his young family to Chicago and soon came under the influence of John Peter Altgelt, a very progressive politician who became the 20th governor of Illinois. And when the workers of the Pullman Ra Railway Company, for whom Darrow was employed as legal counsel, when the workers went on strike, Darrow resigned to represent them. And from there he went on to regularly defend strikers, labor leaders, activists, and anarchists. And by the turn of the century, he was a celebrity of the radical left. In 1912, he took on a case which almost destroyed his professional reputation when he defended two labor leaders who were accused of murder in the tragic Los Angeles Times case, the dynamiting of the Los Angeles Times building. By the end of the trial, Darrow was under attack. He was accused of uh, jury bribery. And although he was eventually found not guilty, his reputation would never be the same. He continued to try high-profile criminal cases well into his 70s, and in 1938 he died at the age of 81. At his request, his friends scattered his ashes at a bridge in Chicago's Jackson Park, where people still gather today in the hope of seeing the ghost of the attorney for the damned, Clarence Darrow.